So we've been learning JavaScript, and I want to point out again that pretty much everything you've learned so far is programming in general. Almost every computer programming language is going to have variables, if-else statements, comparison operators, functions, and what we're about to learn, which is arrays and loops. Um, and I've got one more lesson for you here. We're going to cover arrays and loops, and then you're going to be able to do some fun stuff in the browser to change your web page. So let's just get into it. Once again, I'm using the main.js file, which I've added onto my index.html, and we're going to be doing our coding in here. So an array is simply a list of items. I can go var my list equals, and then I do open and close of square brackets. Now whatever I put in here is a part of my array. So I can go apples, oranges, bananas. And so now I've got my console open over here again because I want to interact with this list. So if I go my list, not defined, let me go ahead and save this. Oh, I didn't turn on live reload for this lesson. I apologize. Save, refresh, my list. There you go. You can see we've got apples, oranges, and bananas. Now if I want to access a specific item on this list, I can go my list, zero, to get the zero entry. One of the things you learn in computer science is that uh, web developers and just developers in general pretty much count from zero. Zero, one, two. And that's kind of a long explanation as to why, so I'm not going to explain it. But the zero index would be apples, the one index, or the first index, would be oranges, and the number two index would be bananas. So if I want to access my list one, that's oranges, and bananas would be my list two. If I go my list three, that's undefined because it hasn't been defined yet. So let's go ahead and add that in. My list three, which you can add after you've created the list, equals pineapples. Let's go ahead and save. It's going to refresh. My list three now equals pineapples. Let's say I want to change index zero to be something else. My list zero equals uh, watermelon. So there you go. So now if I were to go my list, I've added index three and I've changed index one. That's basically how you're going to change values. Um, and it's important to note that these values don't have to be strings. Arrays can hold any type in JavaScript. They can hold strings, numbers, functions, even other arrays. So I can go my list equals apples, the number 12, and let's create a function up here. Go alert hi. That's the one I've been using. Might as well stick to it. I'm just going to add go in there. You notice go is a variable name because functions are actually variables as far as JavaScript is concerned. So now if I look at my list in the console, apples, 12, <laughs> and the function go. So that's pretty much an example of the fact that arrays can hold anything. And if I actually want to access this function and call it, well I can either call go, which is going to alert, or go is in my array. So I can go my list to, and then I can run it just like I can a function. And that's exactly the same as changing these letters to go. So I'm accessing it and then I'm calling it. So that's kind of, you know, it's a little quirky. You really wouldn't do that. But once again, arrays can hold anything. Or I can make this array hold a new array of Will Laura. There we go. So now if I look at my list, it's got apples, 12, and an array of names. Will is the zero index. Laura is the one index. Great. Now arrays have what's called what are called methods, or better yet, actions that you can run on arrays. Let's go back to apples, oranges, bananas. Let's save that. Let's get rid of you. So I can go my list dot shift, and that will give me the first entry off of my list, and it will actually pull it out of the list. So now the list has one less entry. If I look at my list now, apples has been pulled out, and oranges and bananas are all that remain. So now I can go my list shift again. So I could say their current fruit equals my list dot shift. 
There we go. Now current fruit will equal oranges because that was at the front of the stack. And my list only has one item left. So once again, shift pulls your first item out, actually removes it from your list and passes it to whatever your function, passes it to whatever variable is on the other side of your function. Let's go back, let's refresh my page. My list is now back to normal. There's also a pop method. Pop is going to pull the last value off of the list and it's going to actually remove it. So now my list has two entries, the first and the second, and bananas is gone. Now there's also a very cool method called for each. And for each, you pass it a function, and it's automatically going to put two arguments into this function for you. It's going to give you a value and an index for each item. It's going to loop through this, and it's going to run my function. Then it's going to run this value, run the function, and then it's going to take this value and run the function. So I can console log value index, and I should see three console logs. Apples, zero, oranges, one, bananas, two. Or a more useful way of doing it would be alert. I have plus value plus in my shopping bag. I have apples in my shopping bag. I have oranges in my shopping bag. I have bananas in my shopping bag. Now one quirk with JavaScript is Older browsers are not going to have all the newer methods. For each is a newer method. Um, and not every browser has it. So if you're running this on an older browser, you might get an error message that says for each is not defined. Um, and so what you're actually going to have to do is you're going to have to use an older way of looping through or iterating through this list. So let's get into now the second part of, the, of this lesson, which is loops. Loops are, well, they're just what they sound like. They're ways of looping through things over and over again. And there's three kinds of loops in JavaScript. There's the while loop, a do loop, and a for loop. Let's look at each one of these. Ah, what's it doing? Who knows? So let's do the while loop. They're all very similar, by the way. They just have a little bit different way of going about it. As long as what's in here is true, while will execute whatever's in this block whatever's between these curly braces. So what I could do is I could say var times equals zero. And while times is less than 10, let's console log, tried it. Let's also spit out times just so we can see. And let's say times equals times plus one. So now it's going to make it, if it's zero, it's gonna bump it up one. If it's one, it's going to bump it up to two. Let's see what happens. We tried it when times was zero, and then we bumped it up. Now we tried it and times was one. Tried it when times was two. We tried it all the way up till times was nine. And when times was 10, we didn't try it anymore. The while stopped. It did what's called a break. And so as long as this is true, again, it's going to run this block of code. Another way we can simplify this is we can just go times plus plus which is code for bump it up one more. If it's zero, make it one. If it's one, make it two. Another thing you can do is JavaScript, in JavaScript is you can do minus minus, which basically minus is one from whatever it is. So times plus plus. There we go, that's gonna do the exact same thing. So that's a while loop. Uh, there's also a do while loop or a do loop. You don't see this one as often. And that's basically the same thing. So I'm going to go console log, tried it, times. And then I'm going to do same thing, times plus plus. And I'm going to go while times is less than 10. Exact same thing. And you'll notice it does the exact same thing. Tried it 0, tried it 1, tried it 2, tried it 3. The difference, pretty much the only difference between do and while is do is going to always run at least one time, and then it's going to do a check to see if this is true or false. So you're guaranteed one execution, and it might stop after that. Whereas while is going to run the check first, and if that's false, then it's not ever going to run. If it's true, it's gonna run over and over and over again until it's false. So that's do and while, they're very, very similar. 
So the last loop is the for loop. And the for loop is the most common one you're going to see in JavaScript. But unfortunately, it's the most complicated one if you're just starting out. It's not really hard per se. It's just not quite as simple as the while loop and the do while loop. So what you have in the for loop is you have three arguments. You have your setup, you have your comparison, and then you have your change. This is what's going to happen every time it goes through the loop. So here's kind of the common for loop that you're going to see. You're going to see var i equals 0. And then you're going to go i less than 10. So as long as i is less than 10, that's our comparison. That's what would be in our while. And then we're going to do i plus plus every time. So we're starting off. We're going to run this once. We're going to check. Is i less than 10? Yes, it is. We're going to run our loop. And every time we run our loop, we're going to bump i up one more time. And so let's console log this. i is, and then let's do i. Let's run this and see what happens. You see that i is currently 0. We started off, i is 0. And then it's going to run my block. And then it's going to bump i up one more time. Then it's going to run it again. Hey, is i less than 10? Nope. I mean, yes, it is. Run the block. Bump i up one more time. Is i still less than 10? Yep. Run the block. Bump it up. That keeps happening until i is no longer less than 10, and then it breaks. So this is useful because we can actually make i the length of our array. I'll kind of show you what we mean here. Let's make my list, and then we're almost done with our lesson. Oop, and I'm using capital letters now. Nice, these are proper, proper nouns. There we go, so I have apples, oranges, and bananas. So I'm going to say i equals 0. And as long as i is less than my list.length, gth, there you go, then I'm going to do that. So now it's going to run three times. Let me show you what my list.length is. My list.length is three because I have three items in my list. Now that seems a little strange because I have a zero index, one index, two index. You would think length would be two. But length is 3 because when it comes to dot length, we're counting like a normal human would count. Three items in my list. So three items, a 0, a 1, and a 2 index. I know that's confusing, but whatever, that's JavaScript. So as long as i is less than the length of my array, I'm going to loop through. And so what I can do now is I can go console log my list i. So the first time around, that'll be 0. Second time around, it'll be 1. Second time around, it'll be 2. And there is no next time around. I think I said first, second, second. First, second, third. You can see apples, oranges, bananas, and then I'm done. So I can do the exact same thing. Alert, you have my list dot i, or, or brackets i in your basket. So there we go. You have apples in your basket. You have oranges in your basket. And you have bananas in your basket. So that's a for loop. Now you can pretty much copy and paste this code. And that's something that you can use anytime you want to iterate an array. That's the most common for loop. I'll usually, when I started off, I copied and I pasted this away and I saved it because I just couldn't quite remember the order in the syntax. Were these commas? Were these semicolons? It's something you just have to use several times to really get comfortable with. Save this somewhere as a snippet of code that you reuse later. That's arrays. That's loops. And in the next lesson, we're going to use functions, arrays, and loops to do some fun stuff.